Uh, welcome to the ASV library at the Melbourne Observatory. We're here with Alex Progodic. I got it right. Yep. Alex is a tour guide at the Melbourne Observatory and he's going to guide us around the observatory and talk to us about all of the buildings and what their roles are with the observatory. Alex, take it away. Okay, well we're still in here. This is in fact uh, the first government astronomer's office this and one. that's his desk he, over there. In and and so that, that fellow is uh, <laughs> not the government astronomer, that is our librarian. Now yeah, this is now the ASV library as we see it. We might move outside we'll the photo here. and I will show you the building from yes. outside. Okay. Come with us, we're on our way outside. And we come over here and we'll turn around. Now this is the uh, this is the first to go uh, building. Uh, sorry, the observatory building yep. and the office that we're in. As we said, that's uh, the first government astronomer's office, Robert Ellery. And um, over here on the right, we have got and over there we've got the meteorological rooms at the top. And also a, um, a zenith sector room, which is where a telescope can look basically up at a certain section of the sky. And we can see where the original telescope was, and that was the telescope that came out of Williamstown. In fact, the first uh, observatory was not in Melbourne, it was in Williamstown. So the telescope was in that dome. It's not there at the moment, but that was the dome where the... Um, Four and a half inch refractor came from uh, from Williamstown. Yeah. You can just go through there. You just see through the bushes. There is a slip there, and that's the window for the transit. That's the window for the transit uh, room, where the transit telescope from Williamstown came from. And that's uh, that's actually one side of it. Now, at the moment, there's nothing in. There. So, with the GMT house, it's obviously where the Great Melbourne Telescope used to reside. Indeed. Yep. That was where the, the house was built around the telescope. <laughs> yep. The telescope was actually uh, bought in 1869 and it was built by Thomas Grubb in Dublin and um, was brought out here and in fact erected in the spot right there. Now the actual house had to be built around it. The house itself has a roll-off roof. You can see the roof of it and you can actually see the... You can see the beams. Yep, yeah. you can see the beams where it runs on but also what look like little dormer windows are actually the wheels. Oh, okay. And so the whole roof slides back to reveal the telescope. Now has that been restored recently? It has indeed and it's actually now functioning yep. and it um, has been tested um, last uh, prior to COVID, I think it was two Christmases ago, uh, it's actually uh, electrified now, you can actually move it back oh, okay. right? yep. and it's being restored. Now if you just pan back over to the actual uh, chimney there, you can see the chimney, that used to, that used to house the boiler room to operate the steam engine to actually polish the mirrors. Oh, okay. Wow. So the actual telescope, the, uh, tele the Grubb telescope, was a 48-inch Cassegrain and it had metal, speculum metal mirrors. Okay. And they needed to be polished all the time, so they had to have two of them. A polishing one, then use it and polish the other one. So in fact that was... Uh, where the um, steam engine was, and they would need to polish it continually. You can see they are actually going to restore the whole building. Uh, back it's to good to see. Uh, and the GMT, hopefully, which is now actually at the Science Works Museum at the moment, yep. not complete yet, will actually return home to its site. Oh, well, that's wonderful news. Yes, it is. So where, we might, where to from here? What have we got left to look at? We might wander over to the 8-inch telescope. So the 8 inch as in? That is a um, refractor. Yep. That's the only telescope that was still here after the 
observatory was closed in 1945. Ah. So that stayed here all the time. All the other telescopes were in fact uh, sold off. So I know the GMT went up to Canberra. Indeed, went up to Canberra. Do we know where the other ones went? Um, and are they still around? Yeah, the photoheliograph was actually sold and as part of the sale they were allowed to leave it there till about 1963 after 1963 it had to be moved and uh, in fact one of our members actually has uh, bought it and restored it so that first dome you see is actually the photo heliograph house and that's where the photo heliograph is. can we go is. for a wander inside yeah we're going to go inside said the uh, photo heliograph normally lives in this room and uh, was removed for safekeeping while they did the restoration work. Yeah. Now we'll head up the stairs and while we're heading up the stairs you might just have a quick look with your camera at the mechanism which is the governor that controls the speed which is actually uh, a falling weight drive and that controls the speed of the rotation of this telescope. Okay, we'll head up the stairs now. It's pretty impressive, isn't it? And this is the 8-inch refractor telescope, as I said. Both telescopes were actually um, set up here in 1874 for the transit of Venus at the same time. So both buildings were made and the transit of Venus for both telescopes. Now, this is a refractor. The, uh, the lens on it is a, what we call a doublet lens, one of the first doublet lens that prevents any sort of chromatic aberration occurring when you're looking at the images. Yeah. Oh, look at this. We're gonna open the roof. Okay, if I can remember how to do it. It's been, it's been two years. <laughs> Way. The ropes actually are a bit twisted, so they the opportunity for us to get a back again. Oh, that's a lot more light. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Wow, look at that. So, this is an equatorial mount. This is your polar axis, and this is the measures the right section of the hour angle, and that's how we actually adjust the position of the telescope. In its, uh, its position in the sky. Yes, this is the actual drive. Now, if I wind it up and get it going, I can actually probably, I think it has been wound up. So, if I actually turn that on, you should be able to see the mechanism. It's been a while, so it may well actually. <laughs> oh, there she goes, she's starting to move. Oh, yes, I can see right. that. Yeah. So, if we want, if we want to uh, track the object in the night sky would not have that on. Of course we would lock it in position at the moment it's virtually unlocked so uh, I lied about that. It should actually should have been unlocked and it's stored away. But uh, okay that's uh, unlocked position but when it's locked in position and you've got the object that you want to have you basically just leave that in that position and that will track it through the sky. You also have the other adjustment which is your your declination, which is the angle up and the angle down from the equator. So if it's up, it's what we call positive or north in the north. If it's down, it's in the south. Now that building, called the Magnet House, and was built in 1877 not the first the magnet the house wind. here. There was actually an absolute magnet house over there where they're doing the Shakespeare at the moment. And in there was housed, apart from magnetometers, also measurements of temperature, pressure, and uh, a seismograph for measuring you know, earthquakes and earth tremors and various things like that. Most of that was done in the basement. Now- I think I've been in there once. Yes. Once, yeah. We used to, uh, we used to have our presentations and that in there at one okay. stage. Now, that house was used until about 1913. And the reason why it couldn't be used 
was that they actually electrified the trams okay. in St Kilda Road. <laughs> that would upset all the magnetic measurements. So the next transit house, which probably was built and uh, completed, I'm not sure when, was in Tulangi State Forest. Oh, okay. Well, well away from far away from, from any trams. Yes. Hopefully uh, no trams will go out that way. Just while we're here, oh yes, right on this particular line, you see these tiles here, and you see that window there. That is a new over there in that direction. That's the new transit house, or eastern transit house. That was built because the earth, the geology was not very stable, so they ended up uh, having to have a special transit telescope built, in which case they could make adjustments. And there's an obelisk at the end there where there was a marker there if you, that tree wasn't there. Um, the marker's not there anymore, but there's a plaque to say that's where, where it was. And this is the meridian line for the Melbourne Observatory. Okay, now we will go to the last one, which is this very impressive looking dome over here. This one's called the Astrograph House. And it doesn't sell ice cream. It's a big ice cream. It doesn't sell ice doesn't cream sell at ice the cream. moment. No, it's a, a bit disappointing because yeah. I wanted one this afternoon. <laughs> I can do with an ice cream yeah. at the moment as well. So what telescope is inside this building? This is actually the Astronomical Society Victoria's telescope. So this uh, is our telescope in our here? Our telescope in here. The original telescope was in fact the astrograph. And we won't be able to see that. The only way you can see that at the moment is to go to the Sydney Observatory and it's actually been restored and it's in a glass box. We'll look at the telescope that we have and then I'll talk about the telescope that was here. Okay, so we'll head up the stairs. This is the floor level of the actual, where the original telescope was. This has been built specifically, this platform, to house our telescope. And in fact, this is, this is our telescope. This was in fact uh, installed in here, I haven't actually uh, remember the exact date, but about 1936. Bridget, she says Jeffrey, the maker of the telescope from Bendigo. Yep. And uh, this was actually, uh, originally had its own house, but eventually put in this uh, position here. Okay. So this is the one we're going to have running tonight. We'll be running tonight and we'll be looking at the moon. We'll also have the other one running. Okay, we're both going. We'll have both oh, going tonight. Yeah. We'll be able to look at that. Uh, For those of you at home, suffer. We don't get to look through it this time. But we, we are going to try and get these open for people again, aren't we? Oh, definitely. Yeah. So yeah. keep an eye out because yes. um, we're trying to bring back the public viewing nights at the observatory. Yes, the public viewing night will be coming back. Yes. yes. But we will, we will be trying to run uh, public viewing nights. Yeah, that the is the long term goal. Yes, yes, that's the long term goal. Now the actual telescope that was in here was called the Astrograph and you might come over here, there's a photo of it on the board here, the Melbourne Astrograph and you can see the size of it and you can see where the windows are there's a window there, yeah, those yeah. are the windows down there on the actual uh, on the board there, so you can see this platform was meant for this particular telescope Now that's actually a camera uh, that's why it's called the astrograph and the actual camera is the larger telescope okay 13 inch yep the actual finder scope or the one that you look through is a 10 inch <laughs> that's quite a big <laughs> that's a very large camera <laughs> that finder scope is bigger than my telescope <laughs> yeah it is uh it was there to take photographs of the night sky for the carp to cl project the uh they had so many uh photographic plates they had to have computers to actually go through and analyse all the plates. So if we go around to the room, go to the side, you can actually see one of the computers. And uh, I'm going to take the public through here. They all say, well, there it is. That's the computer. No, that's not the computer. That's actually, she's the actual computer there. The young women were employed to actually analyse the photographs. That's just the viewing piece. That's the viewing piece. The, this one's actually not functioning, although we'd love like to get it going, but that's actually what she's looking at there, looking at the glass plates and uh, viewing them and measuring to uh, quite high precision the actual positions of all the stars. Now, Melbourne and Sydney 
were in fact uh, part of the greater Carp to Seal project, worldwide project, and uh, Melbourne had the job of doing analysing all the players. Uh, we, initially we had about six young women employed here. Eventually there were 11 and uh, one or two of them ended up with uh, in pro professional positions. Um, so in fact they were the first uh, women working in the public service of the Victorian government. And um, they weren't allowed to be women, uh, married, so some of them didn't bother to tell. Um, <laughs> so some of them were married but didn't say anything? Didn't say anything, yeah. Don't blame so, them. So anyway, um, there's a statement there, Robert Ellery, young women of ordinary intelligence can be quickly trained in the use of the micrometer and do measurements quickly and well. Well, that's probably the best you could do as a compliment in those days, but the women turned out to be extremely good at the job. In so fact, extremely intelligent, place. yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a timely well, way to end because it was International Women's Day yesterday as well. It was so indeed, yes, so yes, indeed. And thank them for their service. And yeah. thank you for giving us a tour of the Melbourne Observatory. And we thank everybody who's watching this. And we apologise for the sound every now and then. There were some issues because of wind. Um, but we hope you enjoyed the tour of Melbourne Observatory.